First way this fight in the card is going to be a bantamweight bout between the American Shana Young and the Swiss fighter Stephanie Egger. Egger is 33 years old. She's 5-2 and two overall, 3-2 and two in her last five fights, 5-6 five and six in high with a 68-inch reach. On the current money line, she's minus 120, and Shana Young is plus 100. Now, Shana Young goes by the Shanimal. She's 30 years old, 7-3 and three overall, 2-3 and three in her last five fights, 5-7 five and high with a 65-inch reach. So, looking at the basic numbers there, it's a close fight, just about a pick em. Size-wise, very similar. There's a slight reach advantage there for Edgar and a slight height advantage for Shana Young. Record-wise, also very similar. Shana has fought 10 fights, Edgar's fought 7. So experience-wise, a lot of similarities. Now, it did open up with Shana Young as a slight favorite initially, and it flipped over to Edgar being a slight favorite. But again, it's a pick em, so that doesn't really tell you too much other than the fact that it's going to be a close fight, right? Now, we're on Edgar to win the fight, but man, it is close, and I did flip-flop because initially I was on Shana Young. I will admit that. Looking at the striking offensive numbers here, and the takedown numbers, I don't know that those numbers are accurate on Stephanie Egger. Having watched her film, I'm, I have no way that she could be landing 0.67 strikes per minute. So that number has got to be wrong. I'm not sure what it's based off of. But you get the numbers there for striking offense and defense. It doesn't really tell you much because Shana Young, again, is a very good wrestler. But here it says that she's got zero takedowns per 15 minutes. So I guess it's true. I've watched her fight. She doesn't get a lot of takedowns. But when she gets to the ground, she's very avid in the wrestling game. And, and she's very equipped. Um, so look at those numbers if you want to, but I don't think it's going to take a big. I don't think it's going to play a big factor in this fight. As for Tapology, Young is a favorite here, getting 60% of the votes, probably because she's the American fighter. People know her a little bit more. She's from Knoxville, Tennessee. Yada yada yada. When you dive deeper into here, you start finding out more layers to these fighters, and there's layers that are very interesting. Let's talk about Shana Young first. So Shana Young, what's her background? Actually, a college wrestler. She had a scholarship to to a university in Bristol, Tennessee. Actually, wrestled in college. Not just a walk-on, got a scholarship for wrestling. So big-time wrestler in her background, has been into mixed martial arts for a very, very long time. Um, and I expect that wrestling will help her at times. If she gets hurt, she can grapple. Gets on the ground, she can maybe reverse positions because she's fighting a girl who's got very good BJJ skills. So the wrestling should help her. Um, she did karate when she was very young, you know, went up through different sports. And so, look, you're talking about an avid athlete with Shinny Young. She had a baby about a year and a half ago. She's bounced back. Her body's in terrific shape. Um, always in the gym. If you look at her post, her post on Instagram, she was working out while she was pregnant. The consummate athlete. Now there is a rawness to her, though. There's a raw factor. Like she's willing to trade and like backyard brawl type of shit. And it's it's courageous because she's got a, she's got some hands on her. She could throw, but she leaves herself open so she can be taken down. She gets off balance, um, which I know Stephanie Edgar will try to do. Um, she can go ahead and get caught with a few extra punches, which is why when you look at her striking numbers, she tends to absorb more punches than she's dishing out. But she's a tough one, man. Like, it's it. listen, she could take some punches. She doesn't mind getting a few punches when she's walking in on somebody. She likes to push her opponent up against the cage, like really force them against the cage, which usually works for her if she's a shorter fighter. In this case, she's actually the, the slightly taller fighter. I'm not sure how well it's going to work here trying to get her chin underneath of Stephanie Egger. Um, the thing that I really most concerns me with um, with Shannon Young, her, her biggest, I guess, weakness is when she fought Macy Chasson, the longer fighter gave her problems. And even though she's taller than Stephanie Egger, Egger is a long fighter. She fights in a very a long manner. That's sort of her strategy. And so when she fought Macy Chasson, you know, it, you saw there was a little bit of a chink in the armor there for Shannon Young. Now, let me just put out there. Her fight against Macy Chasson was an amazing effort. It was, it was, a, it was a, a testament to her will, her strength. That was a last-minute fight she came in there with. Macy Chasson had come off of, what, four wins in a row where she finished her fighters in UFC. So here was her, her, her opportunity to keep that streak going, and Shannon Young did not let her get finished. Uh, Shannon Young refused to get finished. She almost got choked out a few times. She went the distance. It was at high elevation. She was a late-minute replacement. She flew in the night before from, like, Arizona to Colorado at a very high elevation, and she busted her ass for three rounds and went to decision against a very good fighter in Macy Chasson. So the toughness factor cannot be underestimated. Shannon Young is, is going to be hard to get out of there. Now, she has been rear naked choked twice in her career, and when you watch her film, she gets into situations where – she could be a naked choke. Matter of fact, against Macy Chasson, she was in a choke position at one point. Um, if you look in the fighter, I mean, if you look at the link description, I'm sorry, if you look in the description of the video, you see the links there for the fights that we reviewed, okay, on these fighters. So we did review the Chasson fight back in 2020. Again, very good effort from, from um, Shana Young. She survives the full distance. She goes against a tough, tough fighter, you know. Looking back before that, Shana Young beat Pam Sorensen back in 2016 via split decision. Pam Sorensen's currently in the UFC, so... She's fought some decent people. She's either won or held her own. Now, 2019, she fought Suatama, 8-6 and six fighter. That was an Invicta. Um, she wins the fight by decision, but one thing I didn't like about that fight, she loses round one, and she's in a rear naked choke position in round one. Okay, Suatuma, who's Suatama, who's 8-6 and six overall as a fighter, not a very good fighter, had her in round one in a rear naked choke position. And if she was a better fighter, she probably would have finished Shannon Young. But... 
Chidi Young showed her toughness. She lost round one, drops round one, comes back, wins round two and three, like, dramatically. There's not even close. She's, she's pushing the tempo, knocking her girl back, knocked her down with a nice jab. Um, so she showed some resili resilience in that fight, the ability to come back. That's probably her biggest, like, what's her her biggest weapon? It's her resilience. It's her, like, you know, it's like that Nate Diaz factor. Like, you can't kill her. Like, she's just going to keep coming at you. You're going to punch her in the face. She's going to take it. She's going to keep putting pressure on you. Um, just a very tough mentality, even if she's coming in late notice, even if she's got, you know, short camp, she's going to push the tempo, she's going to be aggressive. Now, we looked at one more fight of hers against Borgia back in 2019. Now, that is also a reasonable win. Not only does she beat Borgia, or Borgia, however you want to pronounce it. Now, Borgia's 3-3, three and three, so I understand her record doesn't look great, but it was a five-round fight, okay? She finishes her in round three by TKO. The, the hands were flying. You can see she could definitely box, which when the fight started, Borgia had the better hands, but by round three... She has pressure, pushing her against the cage, you know, the, just that, that cardio, just that wrestler mentality, grinding, wearing you down. She gets the hands going, gets a TKO win. Now, Borga has a win in Bellator. She's got a loss in Bellator, too, but she's, she's got a Bellator win. So, look, looking at Shannon Young's history, when the distance gets to Macy Chasson after Chasson just finished four, four people in a row, uh, beat Pam Sorensen, right? And she beat Borga, who's got a win in Bellator. So, look, from an from a, from a early fighter's like standpoint, at 30 years old, okay, and 7-3, and three, She's got the potential ingredients to make a move here, right? This would be a huge win for her. It'd be a way for her to sort of, you know, make the next jump. My questions are the rawness of her fighting. Like, she just has a rawness that's not clean, and so it leaves, you know, a lot to be desired. She could find herself in positions where she's getting dominated at times. So let's talk here a little bit about our buddy Stephanie Egger, all right? So Stephanie Egger, what's her background? I had to do some digging on her because, number one, she trains at a gym called Buddy Gym, and it's all the way over there in Switzerland where she's from. And at first glance, you're like, what's this buddy gym? There's like nobody there. You don't see any fighters listed out of there. And so that's a big red, excuse me, red flag for me. I'm like, oh, you know, I don't I think Knoxville makes Marshall, make, Knoxville MMA would be a better training environment than Buddy, in my, you know, my opinion, based upon looking at the gym and the roster, who's there. So that was my first red flag on Stephanie Egger. Then she's 33 years old, you know, has only fought seven fights. Um, doesn't have great competition. Her last fight, she fought Cortez. Oh, that was good competition. What am I saying? She lost by a decision to Tracy Cortez. So here we go. Another good loss here on these two fighters' record. Tracy Cortez is a good fighter. Um, you know, you could see that Edgar was outmatched physically. Okay, so in the clinch, that was the problem. Like, she was getting thrown around at times. Tracy Cortez, she's not only really strong. I think she's got, like, extra strength. She's stronger than what she looks, basically. So, you know, um, it was tough. She got easily taken down a few times. She got thrown around the ring. She got dominated. She was on her back most of the time. Um, I mean, she did get a body lock at one point. Um, she did get a takedown at some point in the fight, but she was just outmatched top to bottom. But losing by decision against Tracy Cortez, you know, again, you could you could you could live with that, right? That links in the description too for that fight. The second fight we looked at for Edgar was her fight in 2020 versus Kiefer. All right, now Kiefer's one in three in her last four fights. Not a very good fighter, um, and Edgar just did really quick work of her. You know, ends up going ahead and taking her to the ground. Now, Edgar has, I guess, a black belt in BJJ. That's the word in the street. I guess Tracy Cortez mentioned during her fight that she found out during between rounds um, that the other girl had a black belt. So you see glimpses of Edgar in her film that she's really nice on the ground. I mean, she's aggressive. She could find her naked choke. She's got some length. She'll get the full full mount. She'll strike her opponent, make her, make her opponent turn over, and get a choke. Now, this is the thing. If, if she gets Young into a situation where Young turns her back, I think Edgar is a much higher level of opponent than what Young, what Young has seen in, in the recent past in terms of her BJJ. So that could be a way that this fight could end actually within the distance is Stephanie Edgar getting a rear naked choke. And I wouldn't be surprised if she actually puts Shana Young to sleep because Young won't tap. <laughs> She's just tough as hell. She won't tap. She'll probably have to be put to sleep in that ring. Now let's look a little further back here at Stephanie Edgar. I was trying to find out more about her. Like what's her background? This small little gym in, in Switzerland. Like no one's there training with her. What, what's her deal? Well, looking back actually, all right? She has something crazy, like 12 national and international gold medals along with several silver and bronze medals throughout her time in judo. So she's a former judo, like, national and world champion, and she has fought none other than Ronda Rousey in judo, and she's one and one against Ronda Rousey in judo. Take that for what you want to take it. That's going to be some weird MMA math, right? Um, but here's the point. She's got a long history, okay? 2019, she was world champions where she said where she went decision against Gabby Garcia. If anyone knows Gabby Garcia in the grappling world, you know what I mean. Um, she went to decision against Gabby Garcia in a grappling match, and Gabby Garcia was much bigger than her, much bigger than Edgar. So, um, yeah. So look, she's been able to grapple with some freaking animals like Garcia. 
She's won matches in judo against people like Ronda Rousey. Uh, she's gotten a decision against people like Tracy Cortez recently. She's got length. And look, I like it when I look at a fighter, right? She also has wins in Invicta and, and Ryzen as well. But when you look at a fighter like her who's got that amazing run of 12 national, international gold medals in another mixed martial arts sport, it does translate. Winning translate, guys. Winning is infectious. People who are winners, they're winners. They translate to something. Look at Volkanovski, right? He talks about it. Anyone can do what I got to do. It's like his attitude, his persona. He's like winning. I just whatever I touch turns to gold. I think for Egger, that long history of winning, um, that long history of being in a different sport where she's had success, and Young has that too, having been a wrestler and whatnot. But I think that international stage that Egger has been on, competing against some top athletes, having fought against people like Ronda Rousey, who is an Olympic medalist. You know, I mean, we're talking about high level mixed martial arts here. I think that's the edge here. Um, and it also explains to me the factor of the red flag of the gym. Let me get back around to that. I, I may have told you before, I was a gymnast growing up. I got a full scholarship to the University of Nebraska for gymnastics, and I walked on and played football there. I'm telling you from being a gymnast, because it's a very niche sport, right? Niche sports like downhill skiing and fucking, I don't know, like MMA. <laughs> MMA is a niche sport. Whether you like it or not, like, you know, kids don't MMA in high school. Kids don't MMA in middle school. There's no MMA clubs for little kids to go and do MMA like Pop Warner or, or, or Little League Baseball. Okay, I'm not talking about those kind of sports. The niche sports where you have to really find the right location for yourself and find that environment. I'm telling you from experience, it's happened plenty in the sport of gymnastics where you'll have a, you'll have a gymnast training in some freaking corner of the world with like one or two teammates and one coach. It doesn't matter as long as that coach has a synergy with that athlete and that athlete has a talent and the push. Some athletes do not require a whole bunch of people around them. Some athletes do not require a whole big gym and all the bells and whistles. And that's a big point here. Some athletes don't require all that. Some athletes like the, the solitude. Some athletes enjoy being able to train in their environment with what they need. When I look at someone like Stephanie Egger, who's made the full-time transition now to mixed martial arts from judo, okay? She did it consciously. She's from Switzerland. There's a sense of like ease with her, a sense of confidence with what she's doing. She didn't make this move because she had to. She wanted to. There was obviously some financial benefits for her doing this as well. My point is she made this decision with her eyes wide open, knowing that this is where I'm going to be training here at this gym called Buddy Gym in Switzerland. I'm happy with it. I'm content with it. And she knows. I would, I would give her the benefit of the doubt of knowing what's best for her because she's a person who's had a lot of success in mixed martial arts. You know what I mean? 12-time, whatever, national, international champion. You know? So talking about a very high level of accolades. And again, in a niche sport, you got to find what's right for you. This is not like NBA basketball or Major League Baseball or like soccer in the UK. Like, look, this is literally one person, it's like a tennis player. Who would have thought that Venus and Serena Williams, when their dad was training them in Compton, dude was training them in Compton on cracked up clay courts. And people told him, like, you don't know anything about tennis. What do you know about tennis? The black guy, what do you know about tennis? Um, I think he kind of answered that question, didn't he? So there's niche sports, those individual sports. You find your environment. You find where you make it the best for yourself. And I think for S. Stephanie Egger, that answers the question of why is she just a small gym called Buddy Gym in Switzerland, you know, instead of maybe something, being something bigger. I don't know. Anyway, I like Stephanie Egger to win the fight. I think that she's going to go ahead and win the striking battle. I think she also wins the position battle. Does Dashani Young win a round? Yeah, of course I can see that. Dashani Young maybe, maybe stun her at some point because she's got hands? Absolutely. But I think the experience of Stephanie Egger, the winning background comes into play here. The long, the long reach is going to also be a little bit of a factor when she's striking. And I think, look, when Shani Young is doing those looping punches, it takes like forever to get there. There's going to be that one-two coming in there from Stephanie Egger, some front kicks as well. So we like Egger win the fight. I hope this breakdown opens your eyes to it because I heard a lot of handicappers saying, oh, it's a pass. It's a women's fight. I don't know. Too many variables. I think when you look close at this fight, you could clearly see that Stephanie Egger probably is the one with the advantages. And if you want to gamble on the fight, let's go with Stephanie Egger.